Blog Talk Radio. Here at ACO Radio, American Communications Online, or any affiliated stations or websites are not responsible for what guests, hosts, or call-ins may say. All programming is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Wow, that sounded crappy to me. (laughs) Hey, everybody. (laughs) This is TJ Morris with ET Radio. We're doing uh, American Communications Online Broadcasting. It goes right up on Spreaker, which goes right up on YouTube for us. But on Saturdays, apparently it's going to work out, it looks like, between me and Ronnie, getting you all to come over and say, uh, we're going to do a You Ain't Going to Believe This kind of show, Ronnie Dawson of Texas and Teresa J. Morris of Florida. I'm in the panhandle, people ask me. So we're going to do UAP talk shows live. That's unidentified anomalous phenomena. So I guess it doesn't have to be identified to be on here, and it doesn't have to be anomalous, but... It doesn't have to be phenomena, but the UAP is something that uh, somebody out there in algorithm land picked out for me, UAP.associates. I'm the director of it, which basically gives me a WordPress that I have to pay for. <laughs> so uh, we've got that, ACIR Radio, and this Blog Talk Radio we've had for eight years now. So Ronnie Dawson's an author and now a radio co-host because he's actually showed up and and done this now uh, about four or five weeks. So I guess we're going to consider him a regular here on our Paranormal Talk Shows Live. And uh, Janet Kerlesson of Hawaii may show up with one of her stories or whatever. Uh, she's invited. But uh, Ronnie, uh, you said something. I just caught it on Facebook. I have to go find him sometimes to make sure he's going to be here. But you said Credo or Credo Critters or something. Uh, why don't you first yeah, introduce I- yourself and – Introduce yourself and tell everybody about you and all that, and uh, I'm going to mute, so I'm going to let you take it away and see how if you can do a full two hours by yourself, or if you need me, just holler, okay? Okay, feel free to jump in anytime you want. Uh, this is Ronnie uh, Dustin. We're going to do a paranormal show tonight, and uh, I'm here high atop my studio on Ranger Hill, and I have a crowd of people with us tonight. This is a live show right here in the... Dawson Radio. So uh, we have a crowd. It may be a little noisy in here from time to time, but if not, we're going to talk about this strange and mysterious cattle critter. It's a little known uh, Bigfoot sighting uh, that occurred here in north central Texas. Uh, you know, when when you hear the the name cattle Texas, uh, people don't really, they think, they think it's out east out there in the swamps, and, and that's where everybody sees the sees the uh, Bigfoot and stuff here in Texas, you know, and Texas isn't really that known for having that many Bigfoot sightings, but we actually have quite a few here in Texas, and uh, we have some of the best Bigfoot sightings that, that people never heard of here in Texas, and, and not so much lately, and I, I think uh, lately because it's just, the, the population's got to the point we've pushed into the trees, we've pushed into the woods, and, and God only knows where we drove them, but but this stuff has all occurred in our past right here. And uh, Cattle, Texas is a little town. Uh, it's it's only about 15 miles north of where I live. And it's right here in, nestled in north central Texas in the hill country. It's not anywhere near east Texas where people might think it would be. Because when you hear the name Cattle, Texas, people associate it with Cattle Lake. Now, there is a Cattle Lake out in east Texas, and I've actually been there, and it's a swampy spooky looking place it's got moss hanging from the trees and it's right on the louisiana border and but that's not where cattle texas is at cattle texas is right out here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in north central texas and uh, and believe it or not uh, you, a lot of the big pit signings people just automatically assume it's out there in the swamps but it's not it's right here in north central texas and this and uh, there for a while, it just spooked the crap out of everyone in this area. And uh, but the, up here in this area, we have a bunch of old farmers and ranchers, and these are hard-nosed, salt-of-the-earth guys, and and they ain't gonna mess with no nonsense like that, you know. So if they don't see it, they're gonna try to debunk it. They're gonna say you don't know what you're talking about. I think they were they were blaming it on uh, they were blaming this UFO, these uh, Bigfoot sightings on. They said a yak. Uh, they thought it might have been a gorilla that escaped from the Fort Worth Zoo. 
they thought uh, we have a, a train track over here that runs through some canyon country, and sometimes the trains derail. And and uh, a lot of the old timers say that it was a uh, gorilla that escaped from a wrecked train that went through the canyon and derailed. You know, but there's no evidence of anything like that happening. But what there is evidence of is there's people around here are seeing some stuff. And uh, and the crazy thing was it had everybody in this whole countryside scared at one point. I mean, it's to the point it was dangerous to walk up to people's house. And I remember during this this uh, cattle critter sighting time, uh, my parents were actually uh, living out in the, this little commu- community of cattle. And, uh, and I was only like four years old. And my sister was like two years old. And and I remember my dad telling the story that, that they were scared to death. They lived out there in the, out in the woods in a pretty, in a pretty good ways away from town. And they were just scared to death of this thing. They left all the lights on. And and uh, and my dad said they were just scared to death at the time. And everybody in, everybody in the whole countryside over here was. And uh, my dad told the story. He said, said we were all in bed asleep. The baby was in there sleeping, and I was in there asleep. And he said, all of a sudden, he heard heard a noise in the living room. He thought, oh, man, I, I you know, this cattle critter may be trying to crawl in the house or something. So my, my dad got up, and he went in that living room, and he was scared to death. And he had his pistol with him. He said he was shaking so bad, he don't know if he could have shot anything with it. And he walked in that living room. He seen, uh, he seen that the, the wind... A window had been left open, and a wind had been blowing the curtains, and the wind had knocked over a lamp. And he said he seen that, and he was relieved. He's going, oh, okay, all right. So he went over there, and he turned the lamp off, and he and then he's got to thinking, I don't want to leave that window open. That cattle critter could crawl in that window, and this is a big old open window with no screen, you know. So he thought, well, he's going to let that window down. Back then, they had this, uh, they put a stick of wood in there to hold the window up so he pulled that stick of wood out and then he let that window fall well apparently there's a cat sitting in that window sill and that window fell on that cat's tail and that cat went to screaming my dad said he about had a heart attack right there he just knew the cattle career had got him you know and he finally realized that that, that window had fell on the cat's tail he pulled the window up and the, and the cat quit screaming and he had the cold chills running up down his back and and uh, it just scared the living daylights out of him. And, and he, he told, he told uh, my mother, he said, man, we got we to gotta move into town. Get out of this place, you know, where these people live. But some had been killing the cattle over there, and they don't know. It. And they found tracks around the ponds and stuff like that, weird-looking footprints. And, and they said it, it was almost like a lot of people were saying it was devil worshippers because something would just tear the cattle's throat out and then not even eat them. And uh, so they were, it really, what it, whatever it was, really had them spooked. And, uh, but I want to talk to you about, uh, that this is a sighting that got the cattle critter started right here. And, uh, and it happened way back, it says, Charlie Gant, 72, a local rancher. And I'm reading this out of the Abilene Reporter newspaper. Uh, for 19, let's see, when it was July, uh, it happened on July 18, 1964, and this was in the Abilene Reporter News a few days later. It said, Charlie Gantz, 72, a local rancher, states that he shot at the eight, nine, or ten times with his 22 long rifle revolver. The eight departed the area of his home that night on July 18, 1964. Unclear, but common sense says before the report by by little Jean Couch Nine, who was who was Charlie Gant's neighbor, he reported seeing the ape while walking to the fishing spot that same day. And his mother also stated that something had been fighting with the dogs at night. Again, it is it is unclear, but seems reasonable to assume she was referring to the night before, or even earlier to these events. But something had residents all worked up, and and there's several articles were written on this thing, 
And uh, and the story about Charlie Gant is is he had a six shooter and he had to reload this thing. And they said he said this thing had throw rocks at the house. And he went outside and he and he and he inspired the shots at it. And he went back in his house and this thing had got on the roof. Something three or four hundred pounds walking on the roof back then uh, is something you know it's just going to make dust and stuff fall off the ceiling. He reloaded his gun again and he ran outside again and shot at it again. And 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 this thing ran off, but this but this same area, you know, the kids. They said the kid, a kid and his mother, nine years old, were walking back from the fishing hole, or they were walking down to the fishing hole actually, and they the kid seen it. He told his mother, and she seen it, and this thing growled at him, threw rocks at him, and, and then took off in the woods. And uh, so these. You know, and this is the this is a neighbor to uh, Charlie Gant, just right down uh, right down from him. You know, so this is the same area that all this happened, and I know it had the whole area worked up, and uh, and and right there in, in that in that cattle area, there was a there was a school teacher that was driving from Palo Pinto teaching in Breckenridge, Texas, that drives through cattle every day. One mile from Cattle, Texas, she's seen a hairy creature crossing the road. So, I mean, there's a lot of people seeing this thing. But uh, anyway, so this story this story had everybody shook up at the time. And uh, see, I'm going to read another article here, and it came from the Breckenridge paper. And the, the headlines of this paper in the record says, says gorilla type animal hunted in cattle area. The cattle critter, an unidentified animal, possibly a gorilla, whose reported appearance this Saturday caused cattle area residents to arm themselves to the teeth, was not seen Sunday night. Everyone who has reported seeing the critter has given the same description to the sheriff's department. Everybody has said the thing is about seven feet tall, four feet wide, and covered with hair. Said Miss Allen Roberts, reporter news correspondent at Caddo. Stevens County Sheriff Chase Booth at the Texas Highway Patrol joined with some 10 to 12 residents of the community 14 miles east of here Saturday night in a search for the animal, first reported seen early Saturday evening. A Caddo resident had, had unloaded his gun at the critter about 11.30 p.m. Saturday, but apparently failed to kill it. So theorized that the wandering animal might be an escape from a game preserve, which has been maintained on Possum Kingdom Lake by by the late F. Kirk Johnson of Fort Worth. So, like I said, everybody was armed to the teeth and scared to death at the at this time of this thing is roaming around out here in the hill country, and uh, and, it, and then it was it was several years later. Uh, I was a, I was a sophomore in high school. And this is this was like 1977 in in October, and I and I at that time I had an old Chevy, a 51 Chevy Lamb pickup, and, uh, and, and me and a friend of mine is off in the same canyon country. It's up here close to the Ranger, and I was going to I was going to Ranger High School up here at the time, and. Uh, and this buddy of mine, his granddad happened to be Owen Rose. Now, Owen Rose, he owned some land off down this canyon country, and he leased uh, a bunch of the other land down there, and he had lots and lots of cattle. And it was a rare privilege that that his son, uh, Carol, had asked the old man if we could trap. There wasn't anybody trapping down there. At this, at this time, uh, pelts were pretty high, and uh, and we were doing some trapping off down in there. We went off down in there and set some traps and stuff. And uh, I was uh, I was I was playing football and stuff. So uh, we had a I had to work out a schedule with him. We couldn't both be there every afternoon. So uh, what would happen was uh, I would I would run the traps in the morning, which I'd go uh, shoot the animals, take them out of the traps, and if it was a skunk, I'd shoot it and leave it in the trap, and then we'd air out all day, and he'd take it out. In that in the afternoon when he went out there, so here I am driving this old pickup, and and I'm having to get up like four o'clock in the morning and go off down in this canyon, and uh, at this time you know in this old canyon country, you know I I was not I was young and and not afraid of anything. I knew the most dangerous thing in that woods is me with a gun, 
<laughs> I wasn't afraid of anything at that time. So I headed off down in that woods every morning without a lick of fear. You know, I 